All right. Key management. So we have both secret keys and public keys, and they have to be distributed somehow. So there is a whole infrastructure for that called PKI, and there is something called PKIX, PKX, or PKIX, and these certificates come from 509, so we have to talk about that, and what happens if a certificate is revoked. So first thing is key distribution. If you use secret key, then how do you tell the other person what the secret key is? So what you do is you beforehand, you somehow keep a secret. You meet somewhere in, the, in some place and say, look, from now on, whenever we send email to each other, we will use this key. All right? So that is one possibility. But if you want to talk to N people, or n people want to talk to each other, then they will need n times n minus 1 by 2. n squared by 2 keys. That's a lot of keys. And and how often do you meet people that you want to send email to? Almost never, almost never. Right? So that's not a very feasible method, but that is one possibility. If you are using public key, the question is how do you trust the public key? So somebody says, well, here, I am Rajya and here is my public key. So how do you trust that this person is Raj Jain and that this person has a pub this public key is, you know, his key and not he stole it from Raj Jain, right? So, so that's the problem. Public key is public, but that doesn't mean that it is correct key. Somebody has to justify, somebody has to say, no, this is the key. That is one issue. Second issue is you really don't use the keys very often. What you do is you get a master key if you met somebody in public, and you met somewhere and then you se selected a secret, so that secret is only good if you don't use it too much. If you use it very often, then it's no longer somebody can figure out, figure it out. So what you do is you never use the master key, you always use a session key. So session key is another secret that you generate when you need, and you send it using the master key. And that's it. That's the only your master key. And for the rest of the session, you will use that session key. And then you, either because the time, you sitting in the, even the session key you don't use for very long, you use for 10, 20 minutes. After 20 minutes you say, well, look, we have been using this key for a long time, let's change the key. Let me generate another session key, and you can generate any random key, because now you have the master key, you can send the session key over the network using the master key. And so the idea is that we, change the key very often. And the key that we are using is called the session key, and the master key is simply used to send the session key. All right? So we don't have too many too many uses of master key because every time we send, we use encryption, we are giving one more data point to the, to the, to the attacker. Right? So the less data point they have, better it is. So therefore, there are two keys, session key and master key. And um, so if you want to, if you want to do that, then this is the, the sequence you could do. You could say, hey, B, I am A and my nonce is N1. This is going in clear. I am A and my nonce is N1. Then B says, Let's use the session key KS, my nonce is N2. And um, this is encrypted. The way it is encrypted is that we take the, ma we take the master key KM and encrypt this whole thing. What is this whole thing? This is the session key KS, your ID, my ID, your number and my number. For your number, instead of sending your number back, I might do something to it, which might be agreed beforehand. It could be a hash, it could be just add one. It could be the same number. So we agreed somehow so that, anyway, so, so it will be clear in the next slide anyway. So basically, so the idea is, this is the encrypted message, and once you get it, you know KM. KM is the master key. 
you can decrypt this part and you can get KS and you can be assured that the I, this is coming from B in some sense. You can um, send back saying that, well, I, um, I know the master key and therefore I was able to decrypt this message and so here is your nonce. If I was not able to decrypt, then I wouldn't know your nonce. Right? So I'm sending the nonce using the key that you suggested. Okay, yes. So the notation is, by the way, this notation will be used throughout this chapter. Anytime I do encrypted message, I will, we will write E, parenthesis, the key, comma, whatever is being encrypted. This message is encrypted with master key. And this is encrypted with session, session key. Okay, all right. So master key was used just once in this thing. And um, and then from here on, you know, we could just do all the con conversation using the session key. All right. Now the problem is how do we get the master key? Or how do we get the session key also? So, so one of the method is, which is more common, is called KDC. Key Distribution Center. So there is one computer, one server, that has a shared secret with everybody else. So that way you only need n keys, because if there are n people, each one has a secret with the master, uh, with the KDC, so only n keys are required. When A wants to talk to B, this is how they go about doing it. Hi, I am A, I want to talk to B, my nonce is N1, so IDA, IDB, and N1, this goes in clear. Then KDC replies in an encrypted message. This message is encrypted with KA. What is KA? KA is the secret for A and the KDC. So that was when he registered, when the A registered with KDC on day one, that secret was established. Okay, so that's the permanent key for A. And inside it is a session key KS with ID A, ID B, N1, and a ticket for B, which has, which is encrypted with B's secret, with, with the B's key, and then KS and ID A. Okay, so this is encryption inside an encryption. That we take this, concatenate with all of this encryption and then concatenation and then this is another encryption. So there are two parts to this message. First part is encrypted with KA, another part is encrypted with KB. So this is just basically one encryption message which is for you and one you can send to B. So anyway, so this, is, this could be called a ticket for B. So then A sends that to B and says, hey B, I want to talk to you and here is the ticket from KDC. So the second part is sent to B. And B can decrypt it because this is, this key B knows. And from there it can find out two things. It can find out the session key and it can find out the ID of A. So then B replies, says, okay, here is my nonce prove that you can decrypt it. So it's, this is encrypted, the nonce is encrypted with the session key. Now A, so if anybody else gets this, um, any of these things, you know, they don't know KS, and so they won't be able to respond, but A knows KS from here, so then it can say, well, here is the function of your nonce, so I know KS, I know the session key. So, so that is how the KDC works. By the way, these diagrams are mine. Actually, I just, the, the book has similar diagrams. Actually, they have only the bottom part, these things. I just added the English meaning of those messages. So one thing you notice is that in everything we do, there is a nonce. Why there is a nonce? Because you don't want people to be able to replay a message. So they cannot take the same message and send it to you later or send it to KDC later or send it to B later. So that nonce is actually something like that message key. You know, if this nonce is used after 20 minutes, that nonce is no good. That message is no good. 
and then generally the nonsense are returned back in the responses so that when you get the response you know which request this response is for so here n1 was sent this way n1 was sent that way um, this ticket was sent and and there is no number here so anybody can send this ticket at any time right but then this one has a nonce and this one has a nonce so if it is replayed then um, the the chaos will not be known by the attacker and then they will not be able to respond this back so this this is a general thing that we'll see in the rest of this chapter again and again so with this method everybody has a secret with the central server and then when you want to talk to somebody else the central server decides the session key for you you can use that and you can give encrypted version of that to the other side and they can believe it because it is encrypted with a secret that they already know about um, so this is the method that was used in Kerberos and I, I think there might be some other chapter where we talk about Kerberos but Kerberos is an authentication system that was developed at MIT where you know they had this big and I'm not sure how the Wooshtel key works, maybe it works something similar but um, Kerberos was for campus wide authentication you could go to any computer and log in yourself similar to Wooshtel key for many different things and um, so Kerberos uses this kind of method where everybody has to register with KDC similarly you register with Wooshtel key and then once you register with Wooshtel key you can go to any place and authenticate yourself so the last point is about hierarchy of KDCs. So you have registered with Bushtel. What if you want to talk to somebody from St. Louis University? Well, in that case, the KDC in Bushtel and KDC in St. Louis University, they both have to either register with each other or with another KDC. And so the, there is a hierarchy. So when A wants to talk to B, A says to KDC, I want to talk to B, and, and then KDC realizes that St. Louis University is not here, sends a message to St. Louis University saying that A wants to talk to your B, and then, you know, because that KDC has a secret with B over there and has a secret with our KDC, things flow back. So there is a whole set of messages encrypted and so on and so forth sent back here, but the end result is very similar to this. There is a session key which is set up which is sent to the other side. So this was so much about the public I mean, using the using KDC. Another method of key distribution is using public keys. And in this case, the and that is what public keys are used for, by the way. Public keys are not used for um, encrypting messages, but for encrypting keys. Because they are so complicated to compute. So here is the message. Here is the method. A wants to talk to B. And A says to B, hey, here is my public key, and I am A. So, there, so basically it sends in clear the public key and the ID. Then B sends the session key using the public key of A. See, it sends an encrypted message with public key of A, which is encrypted with public key of A, the session key KS. So now if A is really A, then it will be able to decrypt this and have KS, all right? Well, this simple method looks like working, but it is not working because you can have man in the middle attack. Now, anybody remembers what is man in the middle attack? That was in Diffie-Hellman, right? Similar thing can happen here. So A is talking to B, but C can come in between and take all the A's messages, generate new messages for B and take all the B's messages and generate new messages for A. So how will that work? It will create its own, it will take its own public key and send it to B, right? Saying that I am A and here is my public key, right? This is not the public key of A, it's public key of C. Then what will happen? Yeah, we will, we will in, use that public key to encrypt a session key which C can decrypt right and then it will either generate the same session key or another session key and send it to A using A's public 
KDC has this thing where if somebody, suppose KDC is in a data center and somebody got into the data center and has all the database that KDC has, then obviously they can pretend that KDC because they are KDC, another copy of KDC. But let's assume that nobody can get into the data center, right? And I'm just pretending. Just like C was pretending in the previous example, C was not A, but it was just taking the messages from the network and pretending. That you cannot do. So now let's see here. When this message goes to this man in the middle, it will not be able to respond because it doesn't know KA. And it will not be able to make the second part because it doesn't know KB. So that secret is required. So now, the problem with this man in the middle is because there is no authentication. How do you know that this is really A? Even though it is saying my public key is A, my public key is this, how do you believe that? It could be somebody else's public key, like public key of C. So for that, the method is as follows. It says I am A and my nonce is N1 and this is an encrypted message already. So this is not in clear. This is encrypted message with the public key of B, N1 and IDA. So my ID is encrypted and my number is encrypted. So then B can decrypt that. Nobody else can decrypt that. B can decrypt that and says, here is my nonce N2 and I am B. It proved that I am B because I can decrypt that and so here is your N1 and this is encrypted with public key of A. So here is my nonce. Now you prove that you know you, you are you can decrypt this. So then A can decrypt it because it is encrypted with public key of A. It can it can tell it what nonce is using public key of B. So now they know each other's secrets. At this this is authentication phase. Once it is authenticated, then they can send the KS as usual. KS is the session key and um, it is encrypted with the private key of A and then again encrypted with public key of B. The point is I said the KDC is kept under lock and key but the lock and key is basically you know I mean as good as no, no hacker can get to it. Right? Just like in our lab you all of you use our lab without getting into the lab. The key, the, our lab is in a lock and key but you know you can get in and actually make it easier for you by using remote desktop. But um, so it's quite possible that somebody got into their server, into the real KDC, and now you know <laughs> they can compromise the whole company. So that is one of the dangers of KDC is that it is a central point, one single point of failure, not only single point of failure, single point of weakness. Yeah, I mean, it's, failure means if the, if the KDC went down, nobody can talk to anybody. That is one problem. But the other problem is if the KDC is compromised, everything is compromised. So this is public key. Now, you could do a combination of some of these. You could do a combination of KDC and private key and KDC and public key and so on and so forth. So here is a, here is a combination which is, was implemented by IBM. So they had a KDC and shares the master key with each user and distributes the session key using master key but the public keys are used to distribute the master keys. So rather than how do you set up that master key in the beginning is that you don't go to KDC and say well I am signing this form, you just can do it using public keys. And. Um, Particularly, the U.S. cannot get to the KDC if they are widely distributed. Some people are in China, some people are in USA. So IBM basically set up the system where they use public key to set up the KDC. Makes sense what I'm talking about is that how do you register with KDC using public key? Once you are registered, then you use the private keys.